Hey, this is probably one of my favorite interviews. Um, Mike Felix did all the real video work. I'm pretty sure I did some audio work on this. But it was obviously not that complicated. If I did, I can't remember. I'll give him credit anyway, and I'll put his YouTube channel. He's mainly doing, like, fighting game streams right now, but he was an excellent editor, and I would like to work with him again, but... However, also I was really appreciative to know that doing this whole interview, especially after the fact, after Journey finally came out, you just realize what he was saying was actually true. It was, it was really appreciative. I'm really appreciative of that. And especially since I don't know what that game company is right now, uh, this was really nice. And I really liked this interview and I hope you did too. Thank you. I'm David Johnson, your host as always, and joining me today is Genova Chen, one of the main directors behind Journey, that game company's newest game. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Glad to be here. Yes, thank you for uh, being on here, Genova. What would be the best way to describe Journey? Uh, this is what I use to describe to someone who don't play games. Sure. Uh, Journey is a hiking game. You go to a, a magical space, you know, an exotic land. Uh, you go out for a hike towards a mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, there are other players around the world who is also hiking to the same place. And if your paths cross each other, then you will see each other. And you can choose to journey together, or you can choose to walk away from each other. Maybe you will finish the journey alone. Maybe you will meet someone who you got lost uh, later in the, on the path. Uh, it is very much like a real hiking. Speaking about that, uh, the online multiplayer, it's very intriguing. There's no way to bring in friends from either real life that you might have met on the internet into the game directly and if you are to make new friends in that experience they to my assumption they'll just live and die and journey what was the decision behind that uh there are many many reasons uh, but i think the most uh interesting one is that we wanted to keep the player immersed in a game you know mm -hmm. make them believe they're there uh, and as soon as you realize this other avatar is controlled by some guy's name is Beach Boy 1986. You immediately are thinking about things outside the game. Oh, this is a guy who was born in 1986, 20, 25 years old, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're no longer there. And you no longer are interacting with this fellow journeyer uh, in the game's world. You're, you're thinking about things outside the game. And so we wanted to uh, keep you immersed, so we have to take away all the distractions. Mm -hmm. uh, and distractions like understanding what a lobby is, what a latency number is, when to start a game or kicking a, kicking a game or friend list, uh, calling a friends and the, all these things are not what we wanted to think when you go out on a hike you know so they're not pure to the experience so, so we spend a lot of time removing them mm -hmm. so a, a game with no lobby no chat no id no voice chat uh no not even gesture because gesture allows you to do things that a human can do but our character doesn't have arms uh so it, doesn't make sense for them to be using human gestures in a, in a game where you're not human. Speaking about the character, I understand from listening to interviews with you that there was a lot of time developing your character to make him better for Journey's gameplay, as he doesn't have arms, he doesn't really have normal legs, so he can't jump as normally, he can't adapt as well on this journey as, say, Drake from Uncharted could. 
Right, the original idea is to do exactly Uncharted 3 while you climb a mountain with hands and legs and there's all these elaborate dynamic uh, IK systems. But we only have like two engineers. There's no way we can do that. Mm -hmm. And we have one artist. So we we're saying, well, rather than trying to be like them but never be able to catch up with them, we should avoid that same competition. So instead of jumping, our character has the ability of flying, you know, that doesn't take too much effort to make something believable. Uh, and uh, the arm is just really kind of a distraction for a lot of games, because once you have arm, you think about what kind of tool you ha have, what kind of weapon you can use. Uh, and it's just not really what we want the player to be thinking about in a game like Journey. You know, when you go on a hike, we want it to be thinking about where I want to be, where I want to go. And rather than what, ca I, what can I use here, what can I use there? Uh, Journey is also a game about uh, making the player feel small, but as soon as you has, have arms and hands, you're thinking about using some, some device. And usually devices in our life are empowerment. Uh, so it makes sense that the player doesn't have arms. Uh, where did the origins of the game come from? Uh, the origin of the game is we wanted to do a game that brings a unique emotional experience that happens between uh, two persons over the internet. Uh, and we look at around uh, the games uh, that's out there in the console space and the kind of online games, uh, the online emotional experience people have. And we say, well, there's a lot of killing each other and there's a lot sure. of kill stuff together, mm -hmm. but there's rarely anything where you feel ha like you're having a strong emotional connection with someone uh, at a deeper personal level and a deeper level behind just the words say, hey, hey, GG, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of thing. We want to have some feeling that the player can have with each other that cross uh, the, the, the language barriers um, or the cultural barriers. Sure. So... Will this game, I'm guessing this game will be available that I can play with someone across the globe. Mm -hmm. That there will no, there will be no server restrictions. Right. Uh, also, you've, you've mentioned a lot of how two people come together on this journey. Does this game have any overall like an ending or overall progression similar to flower or uh there will be a, a progression um it, the story that has a narrative arc just like flower sure uh but the difference is that you may have a chance to experience this with someone throughout the entire process mm -hmm. uh and that i i believe that is going to be something powerful uh if you run into someone, but then you quickly separate, then you know the, the experience wouldn't be as powerful. But that it is your, it has to be your choice to stay with someone uh, to to have that full experience together. Is there a limit to how many people can be in an area, or uh, the limit is you can only see one player at a time. Sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. but you know you could have like hundreds or thousands of people playing the level. And if you disconnect from one, you will quickly connect to someone else. Oh, that's that sounds like a very good way of doing it. Um, so, do you have any tentative release date for this game? Because I'm very excited about it. Uh, we hope to launch it as early as possible. So sure, you know, definitely between to this year and next year, it will be out. But when? Uh, we are still kind of like trying to figure out at this point. And my last question is, uh, and this has been a a process for uh, Journey's controls. Since the beginning of that game company's movement to the PS3, you have used motion control for a lot of movement and uh, just viewing controls in your game. Will Journey's camera control be motion controlled, analog controlled, or a choice between the two? Um, so initially we designed this uh, with the idea of letting someone who rarely play games to play the game. 
Sure. And uh, the traditional two stick, uh, one stick for movement, one stick for camera, is just very hard for someone who are not used to use both of their thumbs at the same time for uh, for directional controls. Sure. Uh, so we actually designed the camera control to use the tilt, which is more intuitive. Um, and but then once once we do testing, a lot of hardcore players like they already get used to the two stick. It actually feels like an effort to learn the new camera control. So they wanted to have the stick support. Um, so right now the game actually recommends you to use the tilt, uh, but offer the stick as an option. If you want to mm -hmm. play as, as the way you want to, you can, but the game recommends you to use the motion control. Interesting. And so it, it's just, it's just to make the experience the most the most easy to meld into for either a traditional or a core or a new gamer mm -hmm. that it, that's the focus so that that sounds that's, like a different a definitely great way to do it yeah because you know even for the online game design we decided to you know the concept of lobby and team numbers these things are not very intuitive. You can't really tell this to a kid. You can't really tell this to your mom. Sure. Uh, and we just wanted to make game more accessible, you know, designed for everybody rather than gamers who have already get accustomed to all these traditions. Uh, so, yeah. Well, thank you very much, and I'm very excited for Journey. And so sometime this year or next year? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks.